Hello everyone, I'm Lynn with Run It Back, and today we have a special interview with two coaches in the Valorant scene. So today I have joined with me Vixie and Aisha. Welcome. Hey. So, Hi. so basically, I just wanted to get your take on the coaching scene in Valorant. So first, uh, could you kind of describe your experience in Valorant and your experience in maybe just FPSs in general? Uh, should I go first? Or... <laughs> sure, take it away. Um, so um, I have experience since CSGO. Uh, I used to play CS semi-professionally, and I say semi-professionally because uh, I'm from Asia, and we didn't really have a very developed scene scene here. And you know, support for women in CS wasn't really big back in the days. And by the time I shifted to Valorant, you know, it became a little more developed, but you know, it's still not there. So um, I've played CS for about five years professionally. Uh, I played a lot of tournaments and stuff, and uh, I played for the second best team in Asia at some point before transitioning to Valorant, where I've been playing since beta, and um, I've gotten top six in VCT Game Changers about two times now. So yeah, um, coaching-wise, I've coached a lot of uh, North American Tier 2 teams and Tier 1 Pakistan teams, which is the country that I'm from. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much my experience. And how about you, Vixie? Um, so I was a semi-professional Unreal Tournament player back in 2007, which is the olden days before, before esports were much of a thing. Um, from there, I only played for about a year, but from there I started doing mostly aim coaching for Counter-Strike. Um, then, you know, just casual FPS games until Valorant came out and I played since beta and thought, yep, this is, this is my FPS. <laughs> As a coach, I began coaching Valorant, uh, at the start of last year, I think, and it has snowballed in a way I couldn't imagine. <laughs> so it, it seems like the typical trend is to go from CSGO or CS to Valorant, but what led you to, to want to stay in Valorant and what, what drew you to Valorant? Um, For me, it was... Uh, so while I was playing CS, I was very much into playing games like Dota, Overwatch, Rainbow Six, League. I, I played a lot of competitive games. And I already had, like, the whole, you know, using abilities thing down. So when Valorant came out, it was, like, you know, my love for uh, MOBAs and FPS just kind of mixed in together. And I got very much involved with Valorant. And I decided, you know, this is the game that I want to play. And I'm very passionate about it, to be honest. And I, I also think, like, I'm kind of toxic competitive at times because, like, I love the game so much. But um, overall, like, you know, Varen just kind of fit me right in all the all the places, all the spots, pretty much. I I was playing a lot of League. I was coaching some League of Legends, um, and then when I saw that Riot was announcing their FPS, I had been feeling a little bit dissatisfied with the state of FPS games for a while. I thought either the gunplay was bad or just the game design philosophy wasn't enjoyable. Like I didn't like how Counter-Strike put so much like micro-mechanical focus on the player over strategy. Um, and then I saw what Valorant was like and I trusted Riot. So I thought, yep. <laughs> and I started playing and I thought, I can get behind this. <laughs> Interesting. So both starting to play the game, but what led you to want to pursue coaching in this game? Um, for me, it was the fact that in my entire CS and Valorant career as a player, I was an IGL. And it's something that I very much enjoyed doing because um, I had thought a lot about the strategic side of the game. I like thinking, I like coming up with things a lot. So 
you know, um, there was like a time period where I just wasn't playing because um, I just didn't think that it was, you know, working out for me at the time because uh, like there were not a lot of uh, teams looking for players and like again being where uh, you know where I'm from um, it's really hard to actually get signed and stuff like that so it was like at that time I was like you know what I'm gonna put a pause on the playing part and I got into coaching because it was very similar to the IGL role itself and I enjoyed it but you know even though I wasn't playing the game I still got to do something that involved me thinking about the game in a way so that kind of got me into coaching Oh, I found it. Um, so I'd, I'd done some coaching for League and I was playing Valorant and just trying to learn everything I could about it. And then I found the Galerant's community and I realized that I had the game knowledge and communication skills to actually help some of the female players. And I thought this is worth doing. So I started to offer free VOD review sessions and then I got so overwhelmed with that because there were just so many I started to charge and then it just built up and up until I was coaching teams. Okay. And I'm I'm also curious to get your take on what do you define as a coach for this game? Um, a coach is someone that can help you, you know, refine the skill that you already have. The coach doesn't really, you know, teach you how to play the game they just improve how you're already playing the game like in my opinion that's what a coach does it's not really a, a coach's do job to you know actually teach you every single part about it you know it, some some of it like has to exist within the player because otherwise you know anyone would just be a really insane player a lot of people you know it, it is kind of a special thing you know it's like it does require a lot of you know your own special talent and a coach is there behind you to kind of just you know help you figure out what that is and help you work on it and you know make it better and like actually bring it out i th i think it's very important to draw the distinction i say this just from what i've seen of other coaches and some team coaches is that it's in it's important to draw a distinction between analyst and coach because you have some people who are trying to coach and they will watch the VOD of a scrim and they will list three dozen mistakes that were made but doesn't offer any direction or any any help to actually improve. Um, they just go, here are your problems, I've seen it, I know so much about the game, you're on your own. <laughs> um, and so I think a coach is someone that takes that knowledge and then gives it direction, like guides improvement um, and just someone who is willing to help someone put all their passion and interest in and existing talent into, you know, to good use. Yeah, that those descriptions are amazing. And it sounds like a lot more teams uh, do need that kind of guidance. But when I spoke to a few players, both in NA and EMEA, uh, they described one of the problems with the Valorant scene is just the lack of coaches. So I, I wanted to get your take on why, on why do you think there is a lack of coaches for Valorant? I think it's because a lot of people just don't see some see themselves in that role, you know, like a lot of people think that they're not really going to get somewhere unless they, you know, play the game when it's not like that, you know, coaches are kind of like a backbone as well of the team and they, you know, in the back they're in the background. Yes, you're not going to get as much fame as you're going to get when you're like a player, but you know, it's about the success and like it's about what you enjoy doing really if you actually enjoy being a part of the game itself and having you know um an effect uh, you know having an impact you can still have it while being a coach it, it just it doesn't have to be you know only as a player i think like a lot of people you know mistake that um you know think that they can't do that unless they're a player but you know, coaches are so important and I think people just need to realize that more. And especially, 
I know that a lot of people, so this is like coming from personal experience, uh, my own experience and people around me that are interested in becoming coaches. Sometimes it's also hard to like, you know, take it seriously and try and, you know, put in the effort when, when you do get into the coaching thing itself, you know, it's like some teams are just not ready to be coached either. You know, like they have this idea in the back of their heads hey i'm a higher rank than you i've played more tournaments than you so i don't think i need to learn from you you know like that that thing is still exists and unfortunately that's also a reason why a lot of coaches don't get opportunities you know some of the best coaches in the game haven't even played professionally and like that's a fact i mean look at chat uh, he's the coach for Envy, and he's such an amazing coach. But you won't really find a lot of his achievements as a player uh, compared to like his achievements as a coach. So I mean, I think like people need to like differentiate between a coach and a player, and realize that coaches do not need to be you know the best players on the planet to be able to teach you or help you improve. And how about you? Yeah. I think it's um I think they're just I, I think like I just said, there isn't that very there isn't very much glamour in coaching. There's no fame, we don't get the spotlight spotlight and we're behind the scenes and because of that people don't see coaches. They don't think about coaching as an option. Um and if they're trying to get better at the game, you know, maybe they hit an immortal or radiant and they think, ah, the next step for me is to become a pro player when maybe they need to shift their focus and go, okay, how can I help others? And I think just a lack of awareness of coaches and people don't, there's no resources on how to become, how to become a coach, how to become a good coach. And so I think it's very difficult for people to take that path seriously and they burn out very quickly. So uh, what do you think are the signs that someone should consider being a coach? So the like the scenario you described, someone hit a mortal and they don't necessarily want to pursue pro play. Like what should a person ask themselves if they wanted to go the, co the coaching route? I think it's stuff like, hey, am I, am I able to focus and sit through an entire wad, first of all? <laughs> I know a lot of people that like to like, you know, want to get into coaching, but they end up just like leaving it in between the, the main problem that they have is, you know, being able to focus and being able to kind of just stay up, you know, watching a lot and like looking for things and pointing them out. Um, and like the fact that there's not a lot of playing involved, so it's not really uh, quote unquote fun for some people, <laughs> you know, it's like, hey, can you focus up? Like, that's the biggest question that you want to ask yourself. If you're able to do that, and, you know, if you're able to just, you know, spend all of your energy thinking about the game, then, you know, you're there pretty much. Like, you you will be able to be a coach. Of course, I'm not saying that anyone who can just think can be a coach. Of course, there are some requirements. You have to, like, properly study the game. Again, like, that's you know, where all the thinking comes in. You you watch wads, you pretty much consume them on a daily basis. You watch every pro player, um, sorry, every pro game that goes on so that you learn and you figure out what is and what shouldn't, you know, happen in the game. So, I mean, for people who want to become coaches, I feel like that's a very important thing. Having the... Uh, you know, the ability to sit through all of that. Interesting. I think there's also, um, you have to think about whether or not you want to, whether or not you know how you actually got to the rank that you did in the first place. Um, because a lot of people, uh, if they came from Counter-Strike, if they've done a lot of aim training, they might climb and learn purely intuitively, they won't actually be able to break down why the game is good. So you need to have those analytical skills and they'll be able to, and you need to be able to understand your own and others' gameplay. And so I think everything that Shai said is true. 
Uh, but I think you also need to ask yourself whether or not you are, whether or not you're able and interested to to break down gameplay in that way. Okay. And how about the flip side? So you have a maybe a free agent roster and they've been performing well in some tournaments. Uh, what are some signs that they should be looking for a coach next and that they are ready for a coach? I think the sign that you kind of need a coach, well, in, in all honesty, I think there's no... Um, you know, there's no point for like a decent free agent team to just go like, "Hey, now we need a coach." I'm, I think like you need a coach at any point, basically. Um, uh, you know, having a coach, needing a coach is not about like when or you know why. It's more about like it is a good thing regardless the entire time, because you know if you have a coach from the beginning since you started the roster, you're kind of just tackling all of the troubles that you're gonna face without one early on and you're going to improve much faster but yeah if you have started without a without a coach i think the point where you realize that you need one regardless is um when you know you kind of just reach this point where it just feels like you're stuck you know like you're doing all of the things that you think you've been doing right but it just feels like something's missing like there is something going wrong everyone's playing for you know properly everyone's cracked you know and the igl is giving all the calls everyone's talking in the team but like what's going wrong it's like at that point you're like you need a you know a sixth person to kind of just come in and tell you you know from the outside perspective what's wrong so yeah mm -hmm. all right i think i think that's true i think everyone I think any team that is serious about improving and is serious about succeeding and participating in tournaments should have a coach because you really do just need that outside perspective. And if I can just talk about like the state of the game for a second, um, Valorant is a very new game. Um, it's only been out for less than two years and our collective understanding of the game is still very much in its infancy. I think the game and the scene hasn't existed long enough yet that we truly understand what like a perfect gameplay or a perfect strategy would look like. And those at like the very top, you know, um, at the top of the VCT, at uh, the top of Radiant are the ones pushing the game forward. And I think that if you have a coach, you're going to improve faster than without a coach. So if you want to catch up to those at the top and if you want to push the game forward as a whole, then you probably should have a coach because it's just streamlining your improvement. Um, and this is actually something I wanted to circle back to. You, you touched on it. Uh, so the lack of coaches, what do you think is the impact in developing Valorant further and also, I wanted to ask in particular with the Game Changers teams, what what do you think is the impact with these lack of coaches? Um, so, like, I think the way to develop coaches, I actually thought a lot about a lot about this before. Um, like, I realized a lot of people they want to get into coaching, but they're they don't know if they're fit for it. And a lot of teams, you know. Uh, because they don't have the experience either where where would they actually you know learn to be a good coach from and stuff i think you know sometimes even joining teams as a manager because like this is like the experience that i had i did not know how people coached i i never had a coach before when i was playing competitively because it, it wasn't really you know it wasn't really a thing in my region coaches and stuff especially for female teams back then um, so I never really had a coach. I had no idea what a coach actually did or, you know, how they were. For me, it was like, you know, I became a manager for a free agent team and I shadowed the coach that was coaching that team. And like, I, that's how I learned, you know, what a coach is all about. And, you know, all the other teams that I, that I managed further, I just picked apart like all of the commons, uh, the common goods pretty much, you know, and uh what wasn't working out and stuff and i you know i took all of that i learned and that's how i you know got better at coaching myself 
I already had the knowledge for the game by playing it myself and uh, whatnot. And the coaching side of it, how to do it is what I learned by shadowing. And I feel like, you know, maybe stuff like internships for coaching and stuff would actually work out pretty well. Okay. Yeah, that's a really good idea. I did want to mention um, that, you know, talking about ways to develop more coaches is people don't know what a good coach looks like. So those kind of internships would be really good. When it comes to game changes, I think there's, it's a complicated problem because, I mean, it's it's basically all misogyny in one way or another, but it's, um, I mean, there are less, that there are fewer highly skilled female players than highly skilled male players. And I think that's because there's still a bit of stigma about women playing video games, um, especially like little girls, people who are socialized as, as girls growing up. Um, there's less encouragement to play video games, so they lack that um, base understanding. That's not to say that people don't try anyway and improve and become very good, but I think that impacts just there being fewer players and therefore fewer female coaches. And there's a lot of problems from existing coaches not wanting to work with women because they view them as just not not as serious. People will say that game changes isn't as serious as the, the main VCT or the VRLs now. Um, and I think that issue exists within the female players as well in thinking that male coaches <coughs> are better than female coaches. And all these factors combined just lead to a really bad situation. Yeah, kind of to add to that, honestly, um, with Game Changers teams uh, from like all that I've seen, because I've been in Game Changers teams myself, and I've seen a lot of teams that my friends coached and stuff. The thing, one thing that I noticed was a common problem was, you know, all of the experienced CS ex-pro female players uh, weren't very like open to you know newer players who were just starting you know their competitive careers with Valorant being their first competitive game and not any other I feel like that's also a problem you know we as women kind of just underestimate each other as well at, at some point you know and I feel like we kind of do it more than even men at some point and you know I feel like that's actually a problem that nobody talks about um I feel like us as women, knowing, you know, how we're all trying to work so hard to be noticed and, you know, prove that, you know, we also have what it takes. We also need to, like, you know, extend that towards other women around us who are trying because, you know, everyone is not bad. Everyone is putting in effort and, you know, people need to see that. It's, you know, you're not going to have a female coach and, you know, just say, hey, maybe, you know, a male coach would be better. I feel like this is like a problem in our scene right now that needs to like be developed further. And women need to like kind of change their own mindset as well coming into this. You know, let's not underestimate the new talent coming in. Hey, you know, they're they're getting the higher rank. They're getting noticed and stuff because they're doing something right. Right. So if you take what they're doing right and you develop it further, they're going to be insane players for your own team. Why not? You know, like, why not give them the chance to do that? And then for female coaches, you know, I have my personal experience. I've been shut down by, I think, two to three female teams uh, based on the fact that I am not a <laughs> male coach and they underestimated that I would be as good as one. So I feel like, you know, us as women, we also need to be supporting each other and you know, not looking down upon each other uh, competitively. I think that's, I think there's a, um, I've lost my train of thought. I'll get back to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So in terms of trying to build this credibility and give people chances, like, and give more women chances, um, you've touched on this, but I wondered if you could uh, elaborate further on what can be done to support the current coaches or to support people who are, and in particularly women, interested in becoming coaches? Maybe not say no to them as soon as they, you know, show interest in becoming coaches. I know a lot of women um, get shut down without even like being able to prove that they have the right experience and they have what it takes to be a good coach. Just 
on the basis that they are in fact women and not men you know um and i know a lot of women are even scared to kind of get into it because they think that you know they're not going to be taken as seriously which does happen actually you know um even in my experience this has happened um I i've coached a bunch of great you know tier two teams um i coached nemesis it's it was a pretty good team i coached uh teams before that as well and I probably wouldn't have had the the chance to actually coach them if I, you know, one of the players or two of the players didn't have good experiences with me as a coach before. And that kind of came from like, you know, they them noticing that I have a lot of good things to say about the game. So I feel like, you know, giving people a chance to kind of just prove themselves and not like shutting them down immediately and like, you know, having a trial for them it's a good thing i just feel like women don't get the same you know opportunity pretty much i think the best way to support current coaches uh, coaches and female coaches in general uh is to talk about them let you know tell people that female coaching exists um because i have had a notable um game changers player um trial for the team that I'm a part of now and she said that the only reason why she trialed is because of the fact that she's never had a female coach before and she um she thought that would be something interesting and new and um she heard about me by reputation and thought yeah let's give it a go it didn't work out in the end but it's true and I think it feels like as a female coach, I have to be 10 times better. I have to be louder. I have to give my credentials more often um, just so that people will actually take me seriously. And it feels like male coaches don't have to do that <laughs> quite as much. So give us a chance. <laughs> How about on the development side? So um, is there anything that Riot or any other organization can do to develop the coaching talent uh, much better? I think they can. Uh, if if you guys remember, I think there was this uh, um, training program for casters by Riot, actually, for Valorant. Um, not very long ago. It was like a few months ago. I, mm -hmm. I think it was pretty great. I think even Mimi was there. I, I, I remember seeing yeah. her pictures mm -hmm. from it. Um, I think like training programs like that would be pretty insane. You know, like it was, I think they did one for Game Changers, if I'm not wrong. I'm not from NA, so I don't remember correctly, but yeah, I, I did. Correct. I do remember seeing something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean... I think training programs and stuff like that, you know, like I said before, maybe an internship, you know, where you can actually shadow a proper coach and stuff like that. I feel like those would be really great to bring more coaches into the scene because there are not enough coaches for the amount of teams that are out there performing right now. So, I mean, you know, coaches, I feel like they need to get the same amount of attention as other talent that exists behind teams. I think in general, developing coaches would be, I think coaches and Riot needs to work with coaches to create resources for how to be a coach, uh, how to make those first steps, what skills you need to require to be a coach. Um, and I think the internship is a really good idea. I think maybe Riot could, I don't know, sponsor some existing coaches to train up other coaches. Um, training programs like that um especially in the female scene because i know that in the most recent emea game changers just gone um uh there was a team that did that had some technical difficulties didn't have a sub and normally the coach would sub in but they had a male coach so 
they couldn't do that. And I think the lack of female coaches in the scene is actually hurting the game changers community to an extent. I actually like that idea. I, I think that's actually such a good point. You know, like, especially in game changers, female coaches would even add to that. You know, it would be such a good thing for the team itself. Male coaches can't sub, but female coaches could, you know. And I feel like, you know, the point that you brought up, Bixi, about how Riot can sponsor, maybe, you know, what they could do is they could collaborate with uh, existing orgs that have Valorant teams on, like, having proper programs. Interesting. No, those all sound like great ideas. I, I hope that they'll be able to implement something like that in the future. Is there anything else that you would like to add or maybe any plugs you would like to make? Um, I would love to develop resources to help coaches. I am really passionate about coaches in the community. I, I see a lot of good coaches. I see a lot of not so good coaches. I see people who could be amazing coaches, but they just don't see it as a possibility for themselves. Um, because of the state of coaching in Valorant in general. So I would love the opportunity to build resources. So I don't know how to do that, but Twitter. (laughs) (laughs) I have a friend who's a Valorant player. He's playing collegiate right now. Before that, he was playing in multiple tier two teams. And I know he was like super interested in getting into coaching at some point, but because he's 18, he thought he would be killing his career by becoming a coach. So, I mean, it's like, you know, coaching needs to be um, a sustainable career where like people actually have a chance to get onto good teams and get paid for it and stuff. You know, coaches need to be taken seriously, not just coaches, you know, analysts and even assistant coaches. I know like everyone has such an impact on the team itself. It just needs to become more sustainable and more, you know, available to people who are actually interested and passionate about it. See, so developing not just the players or the the talent, but also the rest of the ecosystem that supports the players as well. And so you mentioned yeah. coaching, analysts, that kind of thing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, that was a lovely discussion. Thank you both for sharing your experiences with coaching and some of the ways you think that the coaching ecosystem can be improved. Uh, so definitely catch Vixie and Aisha with their their future squads. And thank you so much for listening and catch future interviews with Run It Back. And yeah, thanks for listening. <laughs>